It is, as you saw, Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and breast cancer is the second leading cause of cancer death in women. That is the topic of today's Health Watch. An estimated 40,000 women will die this year from the disease. Joining us this morning to answer some of your questions are CBS News medical correspondent Dr. Jennifer Ashton and early show contributor Dr. Jennifer Hartstein, a psychologist, pretty in pink to support the <laughs> cause. Good morning, ladies. Good morning, Good morning. Maggie. Let's get right to the questions. The first one comes from Facebook. David wants to know, I heard guys can get breast cancer too. Is that true? If so, what is the difference between men's breast cancer and women's breast cancer. Dr. Ashton? Well, the first thing, Maggie, is that most men have no idea that they are at risk for breast cancer. Now, while it's much less common in men than it is in women, it accounts for less than 1% of all breast cancer cases. It can be just as aggressive. The good thing, if you will, here, when you're talking about male breast cancer, is that because men have less breast tissue, it's usually easier for them to feel or in some cases even see the lump. The bad thing is that they tend to be embarrassed yeah. and might not bring that to the attention of a doctor, but important for male, men to know their risk factors, family history, just like for women, obesity, um, alcohol use, because that stimulates the production of estrogen. Men have estrogen too, and that can trigger breast cancer. So again, have the awareness, and if you feel something, see your doctor. Dr. Hartstein, if you feel something, don't be embarrassed. Don't How be embarrassed. can men get over that stigma? It's really hard, and I think the embarrassment factor is something that keeps a lot of people, the fear factor keeps a lot of people from getting help. So I think it's important to recognize, validate that you're embarrassed, validate that you're like, wait, really, this is my problem, and push through that embarrassment and get yourself to the doctor, because getting yourself to the doctor, finding out what it is, yes. is a much better option than waiting and then having no choice. Absolutely. So it's really important to just push through and make that happen. Yeah. Okay, we have another question. Let's hear from Dara Barnett in San Francisco. I have a pretty strong family history of breast cancer. Um, my mother hasn't had it, but all of my aunts and grandmothers had it. What age is the right age for somebody like me to start getting mammograms? We've talked so much about this, and there are so many different opinions. You're a practicing physician. What's your recommendation? Well, a couple of things, Maggie. For one thing, when you have a quote-unquote family history, in medicine, we really talk about that as, if is it a first-degree relative, which means mother, sister, or daughter. Now, if you have other people in your family, aunts, cousins, grandmothers, that's still relevant. It's still your family history, but it's not the same increased risk as if you have a first-degree relative. Okay. The other thing to remember is if you do have a lot of breast cancer in your family, genetic testing for the BRCA mutation is always an option. And lastly, the question about when to start screening, there is no firm guideline for that. What most practicing physicians will say is five to ten years before the youngest person in your family family was diagnosed. Mm. So if that person was diagnosed at age 40, we'll start 30. at age 30 with things like mammograms, possibly MRIs, and definitely right. in younger women, ultrasounds. So for Dara, what age her aunt or grandmother was diagnosed? Subtract 10 years 10 before years. that. Okay. Right. All right, let's hear from Larry Haney now in Los Angeles. As a parent, I would be concerned at what age is a girl capable of getting breast cancer? Well, actually, let's start yeah. with you, Jen. Luckily, the, a lot of parents worry about this. It's very, very rare, but just last year we heard of a girl as young as age 10 who was diagnosed with breast cancer. Rare doesn't... 10. 10 mm -hmm. years of age. And we know now that girls as young as 7 years of age can start breast mm -hmm. development. So as they go through puberty, Jen and I talk about this all the mm -hmm. time, when their bodies change, that's the time that you really want to speak to your daughter. Girls know about breast cancer because the chances of them knowing someone, someone right. whose mother is dealing with it, it may be in their consciousness, in the background of their mind, it can generate anxiety. So start teaching them about their body and give them the facts so that they're not afraid. So you exactly. agree when, when they start agree. puberty? And what's the best approach? Well, I think you have to really teach them, you know, even a little bit younger, we're starting to have those talks about what their body is, how it develops, all those things. So you want to talk about what's normal breast development, what do breasts look like, how do they change over time. And in puberty, they're going to change a lot. Right. And Jen and I were talking before of the importance of families talking about any any sort of history and how that's going to impact their bodies and talk about the fear that might be in there because it does elicit fear all the way around and it's important to keep that communication as open as possible. Okay, we have another question from California. Here's Michelle Kirk. My question today is for families um, trying to help one of the members with a cancer diagnosis. When, when is a good time for them to seek professional help? Great question, Dr. Hartstein. Is, what do you suggest? I think you have to really know the person who's diagnosed. So some people are going to be very stoic, and they're not going to want to go get any sort of 
therapeutic help, any mental health, they're not going to want to do that. But you as the caregiver might really need to do right, that. So yeah. you have to be aware of what everyone's needs are. And I think it's so important to keep that option open, have resources, have supports, talk to the doctors who may have a lot of great support options for you and for your family. And if you as the caregiver need it or your kids need it or any other family members need it, provide it for them and keep that option open as a open dialogue of, hey, maybe talking to someone mm -hmm. about this mortality issue or this question might be really helpful. And I and think you have to read that. And I'm also, sorry. Maggie, it's a good opportunity to remember when you get that diagnosis, a second medical opinion yeah. is always a great idea. Yes. All right. Lastly, uh, a question from Twitter. Allison Joe writes, are there certain lifestyle habits that would help prevent breast cancer? Dr. Ashton, we've talked about this before. Well, right. It bears and repeating. Absolutely, it bears repeating. You can't change your family history, but what you can change is what we call environmental or behavioral lifestyle habits. Diet, low in animal fat, high in fruits and vegetables, very important exercise. Even if you don't continue it, exercise done in the past has a big protective effect on reducing mm. your risk. And then limiting alcohol use, especially in the younger age group, teenagers shouldn't be drinking at all, but young 20s, that can have a protective effect. Less alcohol, the better. And lastly, breastfeeding has a huge and significant effect on reducing the risk of breast cancer. These are all things we can do. And should do. Yeah, Jennifer absolutely. Ashton, Jennifer Hartstein, thank you. Thanks. You